Hey there, it's Eric. I added a couple upgrades to the solar generator I want to share. As you can see on the diagram, I added a switch to be able to turn the inverter off. I also replaced the uh, charger for the system. The last one only produced 50 watts of charge. This one produces 130 watts of charge, so quite an increase right there, definitely. Okay, right now at the current design, to be able to turn the inverter on, we first have to turn the main back box battery disconnect switch, and then you would have to reach down into here and turn the inverter on. I don't consider this a very good design. My wife doesn't really like the idea of reaching down in here with uh, all the wires and everything. Of course, being afraid to get electrocuted, which she wouldn't, but I understand the fear. What I'm gonna do, let me turn that back off here, is it comes with a remote switch system. Don't wanna quite use that switch. I wanna use more of a round one. It's just easier to make a hole into the case. So what I did is using my meter, I traced back the connections back to these two wires. As soon as you connect the two leads there, the system boots up the inverter. So pretty much I'm going to hook this switch up here into the system and create into this feature, which should definitely be nice. It's a little bit crowded there because of the cord, so I don't think I'm going to put it there. I think I'm going to come over to this side, put it here because there's nothing behind, so that should work out real good. So I'm gonna drill the hole into there real quick. Now I just wanna put some silicone around the hole here and weatherproof it up real good. Okay, and now I'm gonna insert the little button. I just gotta pop her in there. I'm gonna hackle it in there to keep it from being pushed out or in or rotating. It looks pretty good. Silicone's a little messy, of course, but yeah, it'll clean right up once it dries. Now I'm gonna cut down the cord. I don't know how long that is. It looks like it could be about 20 feet or so. All I need is a few inches. I'm gonna add a couple of wire connecting terminals so it'll be able to slip right onto the back of that switch. Okay, I got it kind of ran back and under there. I think I'm gonna cut it right about there, just leaving a little bit of slack so I can uh, do any kind of wire management. I just need to strip it back to expose the uh, two green wires. One's white with a green stripe, another one's green. I got the two ends soldered on there, and I just need to put them onto the switch. It really doesn't matter which order I put them in. Okay, I think that came out looking pretty good there. So, test it out. I'm going to turn on the whole generator. It's in eco mode, the inverter to, is not going to turn on right now to convert to 120 volts. Just turn that light back on there until I flip the switch. And once I flip the switch, it's going to kick the inverter on, and then basically we have a AC power. And now you can see it's watts increasing while well, there for a second it surges, but it, it's going to use somewhere between about seven to nine watts just sitting there idling, doing nothing. I'm just going to make myself a quick cocoa here to test it out. You should see it, yeah, kick up to about 1700 watts there, which is about normal for a cure. They use quite a bit. You can definitely need uh, around 1500 watts to 2000 to be able to do this. Thanks for watching. There'll be more upgrades to come. Try to have a good day. Maybe, maybe that should work. Yeah, okay. Had some whipping noises. A couple farts. <laughs>